most the other things you're asking your leaders this year, ask them what is your plan for when you're no longer there. Because if they don't, if they don't have a plan, they're not planning to leave. And that's how we'll keep having people who are almost 200 still in office. Still planning to work. Very strong word. I went to boarding school in the UK and at A-level we offered politics and governance as an A-level course. We don't have that in Nigeria. So if you don't have these opportunities to give your young people a voter's education, if INEC offices are only open from 9 to 3, when young people are trying to hustle 2 to 3 jobs plus university just to survive, then of course young people are not going to get their PPCs. Okay, okay. Right? I'm going to have time on there. Blaze, I'm coming to you. having this meeting against the showman. I'm just responding because you are part of the not too young to go to coach. What do you think about what she has to say? Your thoughts? Um, first of all, I believe that... Um, First of all, I believe that her opinion is valid, um, as is the opinion of everyone in this room. However, I'm going to say that Nigeria is a very interesting place, and we can lay the blame at INEC, at the government, at the people who didn't power in this place, at the waitress, at everything, but at what point are we going to do something? When we first went to the National Assembly 10 years ago, because they're not too young to want to build, it's actually a 10 year journey. When we first went there, they said, you people are supposed to be our personal assistants, go away from here. Okay. And so we went back home and we strategized for 10 years, right? First of all, we were discouraged, etc., etc. we went away. And in 2016, we came back with the strategy, with the plan, with the movement that galvanized the 36 states of this country. To change the constitution, we must get a yes from the 24th State House of Assembly in Nigeria. We got 33. When we went back to the National Assembly in 2016, we said, if you can vote at 18, you should be able to be voted for. Mm -hmm. But because advocacy never ends, we negotiated. It was either they throw the bill out again, like they've done with the Gender and Equal Opportunity Bill for so long. It was either they threw it out or we negotiated. And so we said, you know what, drop some. If this is what it takes to get this bill passed, then drop some. And we will go back. Because advocacy never ends. And so my response, all of this to say that we want something. If not for anything, when we were going around the country, Taraba State House of Assembly said no to the bill. What did young people do? We went online. We went to the papers. We went to the press. And we said, Taraba, we have inducted you into the Hall of Shame. We did this on a Friday. By Saturday, our phones were ringing off the hook because Taraba State legislators were saying, what is going on? Our young people are rising against us. By Monday, Taraba State House Assembly sat and said yes to the bill. What did we do? We showed young people that if we come together and talk to our legislators and say we want something, and if you don't give us this thing, you're not going back into that office, they will do it. So did we win as far as finance are concerned? What a number of people don't know is that that bill also had a provision to enforce something that currently exists in the electoral law, which is mitigating excessive campaign spend. Of course, legislators screw it up. But guess what? We're coming back. And we won't stop coming back till we take our country. Thank you. 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 So now let's look at that fifty one point one percent. Um, about uh, twenty six percent of them are students. Uh, so um, I understand the uh, concerns about a young man in the crowd out there. And then if you look at it, you find that I mean, um, so as a as a striker, that is um, uh, academic staff uh, uh, studying at uh, uh, Union of Universities, hmm. and you find that you know strike like maybe three months right now. And then most of the students are perhaps registered around the university. Yeah. So going through elections, if these people were still stay up, still back at home, it means we are looking at um, a higher number of them actually not being able to vote. Yes. And then again, uh, so when we are looking at these things, um, it begins to raise a lot of questions. So I'm of the opinion, I'm, I'm, I want to believe that you know, you want, you are going to come out to vote. But then again, we are looking at something like the strike going on right now. You know, we are looking at, um, yeah, yeah, so these are some of the parties I think, uh, I, I, so I'm a bit of, I'm thinking I'm a bit different about it. 
So okay, interesting numbers there. We want to open this discussion up. Anybody with a question, either for the panel or a contribution, your thoughts, even as we are getting closer and closer to that election? Hands up, anyone real quick? We've got people walking around with mics, okay? Let's get one there and then a lady at the back there as well. Please tell us where you're from before you give us your question or contribution. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Maria Brown from the University of Vegas. Yeah, my contribution is that as students, the whole voting process kind of stressful to get a PVC loan. I've been to look at my local government like four times and I spent less than three hours each trying to get this card. And at the end of the day, you have to look at everything. So is it what, what do they tell you? Four times? Every single time I go there, I check the online website and I'm like, it's at this location. I get there and they're like, oh, your card is not here. Come back two weeks, one month. Wow. And I registered since May. And this is February. And I'm going there tomorrow for the last time to see if it's going to be there. I'm not going to be interested in this country. I'm going to be there. I'm a youth, like a young person. I'm interested in who's going to lead us. That's why I'm actually making all this effort to go and get this card. So I can, like, uh, my, whatever I decide to vote for, I think I know my vote has counted. So I know that they have to look at it. They are frustrating us with the whole process. So why should we go and vote when you know at the end of the day? First of all, you want to get a PVC, it's stressful. Getting to the election ground, you can spend 10 hours or how many hours going, even any officials can even come with me on that election day. So, everything in this country just stressful and all. So, most of the people blame the youth, they blame the young ones, blame okay. the young ones every single time, make us the victim and all. But we're actually interested in our country, yeah. but they're frustrating us as the honest truth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for that contribution. Um, we have somebody else at the back, a lady. Um, so basically, um, what I have to say is that sometimes people are just saying it's the actual strike and stuff. Sometimes some youth don't want to vote because we keep seeing the same people all over again. Yeah. The same faces, the same people that rule during the um, military regime, they are back here again to come and do something that they did way back before and then they are back again to do the same thing. So um, the question I have is that, how can the youth Really, really, really penetrates the market. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the market. Well, you understand what she's saying now. I completely understand what you're both saying. Thank you for those contributions as well. Now, I think this is where it gets important for us to realize our position in the country as Nigeria's young populace. It's one thing for me to have initially said that yes, it is frustrating and this is deliberate disempowerment, but the only way that we can also solve that is with us. I had a different PVC experience when I went to go and get mine, and I know I'm in the minority with that because, honestly speaking, my PVC experience is 30 minutes long. I went one afternoon in Etiosa, I went in, I literally said, I'm here to register for my PVC. In 10 minutes, they saw to me, and in 20 minutes, I had my um, temporary voters card. Okay. So I do know that people have had mixed experiences, the majority of experiences being bad, Maybe but that is the deliberate transport. disempowerment that we are speaking of. So, yes, as Nigeria's young populace, we are not ensuring that we put ourselves through this pain and through this system for the better and greater good, which is the end result, then we are never going to see a Nigeria where we have an election with more than two candidates having people focus on them because they're contesting in the two major parties. We're never going to see a Nigeria where we have a president that is 40 years old, 39 years old, or 35 years old, as a not too young to run bill has passed. It comes and starts with us. So in as much as it is frustrating, we have to make those moves. You go, they don't give you your, PS, uh, your PVC, please go back. Please keep on going back until you get it, because this is the system they are trying to set up to ensure yeah, that as young people. It's very important for young people to also ask about long-term plans. So it's very great for you to say this is what you're going to do now, but the infrastructure that you're going to build, is it going to outlive you? We can't work with something that after four years or eight years it's disappeared, it's gone. How do we measure your impact? So let's just ask about let's just ask about their long-term plans, things that will outlive them. I, I I personally believe that you can never measure how good a leader or a governor is until after he has power. He will reach out to you. And this is how movements are born. The other thing I'm going to say is what are you asking of your leaders? One thing Nigeria lacks, whether it's football or music or whatever, we lack transition. 
Everybody wants to stay in a thing till they die. That's why we have 40 year old football players internationally. So amongst the other things you're asking your leaders this year, ask them what is your plan for when you're no longer there. Because if they don't, if they don't have a plan, they're not planning to leave. And that's how we'll keep having people who are almost 200 still in office, still planning to leave. Very slow. The next time you send money home, to that young person in the village. Don't just send that money, send a message. We all send money to people at home, in the villages, in the suburbs, etc. When you're sending that money, send a message with it. Tell them to vote in peace. Tell them to stay at the ballot and protect their mandate. Tell them not to be violent. The more we do these things, we slowly, very slowly, but we start to bridge that gap. And so when we say somebody doesn't need to be literate, to be politically literate, and we must advance political socialization. So for me, it's, it's less about young people. It is about young people going out there and voting, but I think there's more to it than that as well. We need to see young people civically engaged. Civic engagement comes through the media. I see the media as the fourth arm of government. Use the media as a tool for change. How are you using your social media platforms? What kind of information are you taking from social media? And what kind of information are you putting out there? Are you volunteering as a young person? Are you doing something to give back to your community? Because as Nigerians, I do see us complaining a lot, but it's okay to have the head office of a bank in Marina with gutters outside, and you're like, why can't you do some CSR and just clean up your environment? So we need to be able to take that step where we okay. say we want a better country. It's more than our political system. It's more than businesses. We actually want a better country, and that starts with human development. Ace, hey, thank you so much. You've been a very able panel. Very interesting to you so much. We have been focusing on Africa, live from Lagos to Nigeria. My name is Wahidu Mora. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, guys. He's good, isn't he? So I'm at the Southern Sun Hotel Ikoi and I just finished attending the BBC Kamala Dumor Award organized by BBC and I'm just looking everywhere right now because I'm shy but anyways the event was actually amazing you guys must have just finished you guys you must have just finished see I'm nervous now you must have just finished watching the panel session it was very 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 educating and very what film me fam because I want to drop this one now so I hope you enjoyed it please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe thank you peace hi guys I hope you enjoyed watching the panel session I am hiding at the back of the hotel not at the back but at a side where there are not so much people so I can talk freely with you guys by the way I have my souvenir here anyway the panel session was very interesting, very invigorating and I'm actually now looking for some way to join BBC and I'm actually considering journalism. Anyway, this program was amazing. I'm going to be heading home now. I hope you guys liked the video. I thought it would be fun to share with you guys, you know, taking note of the fact that elections are just here, like Nigerian elections. I hope you liked it. If you did, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe and Yes, I'm going to be sharing more of my journey with you. Bye-bye. For now. <laughs>